welcome back into the studio. I am so excited to start this next project. I have been wanting to do a concertina journal for a very long time. And I am finally getting an opportunity to do that. And I thought I'm gonna take you along with me as we do a traditional, maybe not so traditional, concertina journal. So this is also known as an accordion style um, journal. And um, I think I first saw this um, being used by Louise Fletcher in her studio notes. She does a lot of um, art journaling, not in the tr sense that um, I have used it a lot, but in order for her to develop color palettes for a series that she's working on, taking notes about something she's working on, discovering the things that she likes. And when I saw her using the, the concertina, I was really um, intrigued by it and have been wanting to do something using this format. And I've just been so busy. I haven't taken the opportunity to do so, but I am. I am now and I'm taking you along for the ride. So this is gonna be a multi-part. So we're gonna start off with laying out our pages and then we're gonna do the actual artwork because I thought it would be easier to do on the big format before it is bound. And then per usual, then I'm gonna take you in and bind at the end. Binding is kind of like my one of my favorite parts. And I like to see one video all on the finishing touches and the binding. So that's how we're gonna do this one. I apologize for my shake. I am hand holding my camera for this one. I should have set up my tripod. Oh well, welcome aboard. I hope you enjoy this one. All right, so I started with a 30 by 22 piece of 90 pound um, watercolor paper. I went with a 90 pound because I needed to be able to fold it and not have it crack. So 90 pound is, seems to be the heaviest that I've been able to go um, and not have it crack. So I prefer, as you probably know, I prefer to work on um, watercolor paper because it can really withstand the amount of liquids and heaviness that I throw at it. So this is 30 by 22. Um, it is actually a Blick um, brand watercolor paper. I really like it. And I found that I can get three strips of six by six. So six inches by six inches um, uh, squares out of one strip. So I cut these down. Actually, I ripped them down um, using a really long straight edge. I ripped them down in six inch strips. So that's what this is here. It is a six inch strip. Try and get it all. It's pretty long. So now the next thing I've done is I've gone through and I have made tick marks every six inches. Now this isn't going to be exact because as you know, folding thick things is challenging, uh, but we're gonna do the best that we can do. So I'm just going using my tape measuring tape here to make sure I have that. The next thing you're gonna need is a bone folder or something. I mean, even um, a hardy, um, the handle end of a plastic palette knife will work. You just wanna make sure there's something that's not colored because then you're gonna get the color off under your paper. So the first thing I do is I like, I fold the first one. I'm not gonna be um, too worried about which direction I start. Um, I can always turn them back. So when I'm gonna usually fold 
the first one where I can see the tick marks to the outside. So here's one of my ticks. Here, this will help better. So here's one of my ticks and the other one. So for them facing me, so I can see them better. And I'm just gonna bring it to the tick. And then I'm gonna try and make this as level here to the page. So it's not skewed. And it shouldn't be if we hit those ticks. And then use my bone folder. And as you can see, I've got those right on the line. So then I'm gonna, the next one, I'm gonna flip it over. And this is just my way of doing things till I see that tick. And I'm gonna fold this time, I'm going to open it back up and I'm gonna fold again to that line. I like to see them. I find that my accuracy is a lot better when I can see them. And sometimes you have to like pre-notch them out a little bit. And then double check that, see we're skewed here. We don't wanna be skewed. So then I'm gonna do that and creep it back up. And get that down. And I'm right on. All right, so we're gonna go to the next one, which is right here. I'm gonna fold that back again. So I like the notch, the, the pencil mark, it's not really a notch, the pencil mark to be out where I can see it. And I'm gonna kind of notch that on both sides. And then I'm gonna flip this so I can see and make sure that we're on. And level. And we're right on. So then we're going to go to the next one. And this is easier because we're already at the end. So here's where my tick marks are. And I'm going to kind of pre do it a little bit, give it a little pre fold. And make sure this should line up with the last fold. So it's a little off. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up and not really worry about where my marks are. Because that should give us a better even pages. So I'm going to pull this back again so you can see it. So now we can do that accordion. See how it's more like an accordion? And then they're pretty level here. This one's off a little bit, and I'm not gonna worry about it. This is not an exact science. All right, so now I've done two of these. Here's my other one. So the next thing is you're gonna see that we have, val we have peaks and valleys, peak, valley we want to follow that so with using just two of these three i will have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty pages so when i add my third we're going to add one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we'll have 30 pages that makes sense since there's five per five panels per section so I'm gonna go ahead and do my third one and then we're gonna come back and I'm going to show you how to connect for this peak where the two panels are coming together all right so now I've got my third signature has been Z folded. And so now I need to pair it up and you can see this is not correct. So I gotta switch this around 
to make it so the valleys meet here and the peak meets here. So now what I'm gonna do with the excess strip that I had, I am gonna create a segment to hold these together. So I'm gonna get this out of my way and I know I need two of them. All right, so what I like to do is I like to have an inch on either side and I prefer mine to be the full size. So I'm gonna have to go lengthwise on this. So I'm just gonna mark this. I know it's six, but I'm still just gonna mark it because yeah, because it seems like the right thing to do. I don't know why. All right. So six and oops, I need my straight edge. All right. I got this alumina cutter from um, Blick and I love it. It's huge. It's 36 inches long, but that's great for when I have watercolor paper. All right, I, I prefer to rip from the right side because I'm right-handed. So I'm just gonna turn this around to what is comfortable for me. And I am going to get that right on my six inch line. And then I'm gonna double check it. And I only need two, but I think, oh no, that's four inches, so I only need one piece. Okay, so now I'm gonna rip this down to two inches. So two inches will give us <clears throat> an inch on either side of the valley <clears throat> or the peak, excuse me. And rip. So we're gonna get our first two sections. And you can see, I'm just gonna score it in the center and fold it over the sides and it's great length. So now I'm just gonna fold this in half and it's thicker so you might have to rock it a bit. And then take my bone folder and then I'm gonna do the same on this one. the green. So it's a little challenging. It's going to be a little off and I really am not that particular. All right. So here is our valley, the, the first valley. So I'm going to open this putting those together and this is going to simply come over like this and glue. Now if you don't like this lump here you can use tape. Um, I prefer to have a continuation of the watercolor paper um, instead of a change in medium but that is totally up to you on how you handle that. Now, I, there's a, a lot of different glues that you can use for this. Um, you could use a pH neutral PVA glue, which is a book binding glue. So it's great for this kind of a thing. You can also use Fabri-Tac, which is not a traditional paper type of glue, but I really like how it works um, on paper. Um, I think that the matte gel medium for this weight of paper is too light, but you could go 
um, this is glossy so if it scooches out then you're gonna have a bleep so I'm actually going to use my Fabri-Tac on this and so I am going to add my Fabri-Tac and get it down it's almost empty it is a glue I carry in my store because it's one of my it's one of my favorites that I use on a regular basis can you tell I did fabric last I'm really not gonna worry about it and just leave it okay I'll turn that upside down maybe that'll help us with the next go round here so I need to make sure my ends are flush to each other and then I need to make sure that this is right in the groove and we're level. And then I'm gonna fold that over. Give it some pressure. Kind of squish that out, get any little bits out of excess. And then I'm gonna flip this over and do the exact same thing on the flip side. There we go. I have a tendency to over glue, you know, to each her own. pull out my handy dandy clothes pins and set this aside to let it dry. I love these clothes pins. I leave them right out on my table. Um, I've got them in all different sizes. I have binder clips in the same basket. I think I found these at the Target Dollar Center or whatever. So I'm going to let that sit. And then I'm gonna come back and do this end with my third signature. All right, so this has been allowed to dry. So I am just going to remove the clothespins off of both sections. And now you can see we are attached. So now we have this long Z fold. So when we create our covers, this panel will not be usable because it's what will attach to the cover and this panel will not be available because it'll attach to the cover. So the covers, which I haven't made any decisions on yet, um, go on either end. So you just adhere this to the cover. So you have all this space and you can work in two page layouts you can work in longer sections. You can work as a whole and just move down the, the way as you go. And you have the other side as well. So you have two sides. So in total, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. We can't count that because it's the cover. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. We have 28 pages in this concertina journal. 
So that is putting together the Z fold portion, uh, the interior portion of the journal itself. So now let's get started in creating our pages because I'm going to put my covers on last. It's something I like to do is the binding at the end because I kind of base what I'm going to do with my binding on what has happened in the inside. So I like them to be a cohesive whole on these types of journals. So that's next.